Hey there everyone, today's video is going to be a bit different from what I normally do and I'm sorry if I end up rambling in this video, I just, I need to get this out there. What this video is about is about an Instagram post that I made about a week ago. I had a lot of people in the comments section of that photo not know about certain things about piercings and um, practices which are right and wrong. So as you can tell from the title, it's about piercings and what went wrong. I'm just going to start this off and go from beginning to end in chronological order just so you guys know exactly what happened. So started off, I was in a town which is a few hours away from me, just visiting family and all that. And we were in the mall, we walked past a piercing parlour, not just like a hairdresser because hairdressers in Australia seem to do a lot of ear, tongue and belly button piercings. Um, it was a proper, just a piercing shop. So I got kind of excited because my regular piercer only comes to Brisbane once every six months and he's great. He's the best piercer I've ever gone to, just all the best piercings have come from him. So I usually wait for him to come back to Brisbane, but I don't know why. I just, I walked in the store and decided to get ear piercings. Now originally I was going to get my conch done, but I thought mm, maybe I'll leave that up to my regular piercer. So I decided to get another set of lobe piercings. So from here I went to the counter, I booked my appointment, I paid, it cost $90 because I requested the hollow point needle for my lobes. Anyway, at this point I walked away, got some lunch and then came back about an hour later ready for my appointment. I walked into the room, laid down and I looked over and I saw her reach into a drawer and pull out the gun. And I said, I requested the um, hollow point needle and she said, no, 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 you're only doing that because you've heard bad things about this. And I said, well, yeah, they're not safe. And at this point she said, honey, I'm the one who has the piercing accreditations, I've got my sterilization licensing, blah, blah, blah. And then she said, you know, guns have changed recently. They're more safe than hollow point needles and less painful. I must have been in like super gullible mode because I believed her. At this point, I just laid down, turned my head, she placed the dot on my ears, I said okay, and she pierced them. Now, when this one got pierced, for some reason, like the back got stuck in the gun, so she pulled it back out and then put another stud through it. Uh, that didn't raise any alarms for me. I mean, I was a little bit concerned about the fact that that happened, but I just chalked it up to malfunction. So I walked away happy, but my this particular ear was a little bit more painful than this one. If you've had lobe piercings before, you would have been told four to eight weeks for healing time, and within this you clean it regularly, you don't, you refrain from touching it so much because it's an open wound that's got to heal. Um, so I did that. I do that with all my piercings. I'm quite experienced with the healing of piercings. And 10 weeks later, I decided to try to take them out and put a new set of earrings in because I always change them over to a forever set is what I call them because they're the ones that I pretty much always wear in my ears. And I noticed that particularly this one was still very, very sensitive and hot. I didn't even take the earring out. I just, I kind of twisted it a little bit and it was, it was really warm. This one was okay. So I decided to just chalk it up to it's not properly healed yet. I mean, at the time I had a cold as well. So I thought maybe just it didn't heal as well. So I waited a few more weeks and then I decided to like play with it again after I'd cleaned it. And I noticed that there was a lump growing on the back of my ear and I was like, damn, it's a keloid. Now a keloid is a growth of skin that usually grows around a piercing. You, sometimes they go away by themselves. Sometimes you've got to take out the piercing, wait for it to go away and then get it re-pierced. So from here, I decided to contact the girl who did my piercing to find out that she didn't work at that store anymore. I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but that's what they told me. And I'm not about to go and investigate. So over this next couple of weeks, I noticed that the keloid was still growing and that it was becoming increasingly more and more painful. So much so that I couldn't even sleep on this side anymore. And this is the main side I sleep on. So I started to sleep on this side and 
Um, fast forward a month and it brings you up to about a week ago when the mildly disturbing event happened. I had just finished filming a video and I was taking off all my makeup and brushing out my hair and I got the brush caught within this earring but I, I didn't know that it was caught and I kept going and I pulled. Next thing I know I just I feel something trickling down my neck and there's something in my brush. The thing that was in my brush was my earring and a piece of skin, like a good chunk of skin, and there was just blood pouring down my neck. But it wasn't just blood, it was like blood and this clear yellowish, slightly yellowish liquid, so obviously pus. And I freaked out. I didn't know it was this bad. And it was it just kept coming. That's why I had such a big gauze on my ear, because it just it just kept coming. It was almost like an artery had burst inside my ear. Obviously not that dramatic. So from here I, I was kind of like shaking at this point. I was going like, what the hell, what the hell? And I started to worry because I had just seen earlier that day about someone who had necrotizing fasciitis, which is a skin condition. And I know I don't have necrotizing fasciitis, but at this point I was just like, what if? And I started freaking out, I ran into the kitchen, got my first aid kit out, and I got a big first aid kit. And just saline, just smashing it into the back of my ear to wash it all out. And then I got all kinds of antiseptics and just back on the back of my ear, I was freaking out. And I started to try and like put gauze all over it. And the first piece of gauze just bled straight through, the second piece bled straight through, the third not quite and then I just put a fourth one over the top and that's what the photo was and again I will put that photo right here. So the photo was taken just after that and you can see on my face that I'm really really not happy. Um, so at this point I decided to make an appointment with my doctor and he just you know cleaned up the wound and explained to me that um, the excessive bleeding would have come from maybe a damaged blood vessel, a broken blood vessel, something like that um, because it was a very small wound, well somewhat small um, it's definitely a lot larger than a piercing hole should be. So what happened was the keloid ripped off with my earring. I don't know how, I don't know why. My doctor assured me that, you know, there's no flesh-eating bacteria or anything like that. It's it's all good, it's a healthy wound. Um, and that if I wanted to get it re-pierced, I'd probably wait three to four months. And I'm probably, if I get it redone, I'm probably going to wait six or more. Wait till my regular piercer is back in Brisbane. But another interesting thing was that my doctor said this is not even the worst he's seen from a piercing gun incident. So from here I decided to run around and do a little bit of research online and all that and I came across some really scary things about the gun and the studs that they load into them. And the thing is is that they're expected to pierce through an ear, sometimes even a nose. I've I don't know why people would do that, but I've seen it done on videos on YouTube. And they can't even break through a latex glove, yet people are put th putting them through the ears. So clearly they're a blunt object trying to break through what is essentially pretty tough. Your skin is pretty tough. It baffles me why this is still a legal procedure, because it's quite potentially damaging and harmful. Um, there are, if you Google image search and all of that, you will see people who had necrotizing bacteria inside piercings and all kinds of stuff, you know, it was, it was a horror show. And at this point, I'm actually kind of glad that this happened. I know that sounds really strange, but mine wasn't that severe compared to a heap of other people's problems. And it also brought to light why you shouldn't do this. I knew there was a reason why I shouldn't do that but I don't know I, I was extremely gullible that day so that is why I place a lot of the blame onto myself because I feel like I should have known better and I did know better but I just decided to be super gullible so out of this whole thing I just I would encourage people to think twice before going near a piercing gun it may seem easier it may be cheaper but you know you get what you pay for in the end and that's the same with tattoos, it's the same with piercings, it's the same with any body modification. Because I just don't think you should go cheap when it comes to your body and potentially your health. There are so many bacteria strains that live on your skin, including one that is antibiotic resistant. So 
any kind of method that can severely reduce your infection rates is great. So that is all that happened with my ear and I know that I kind of over dramatized it I guess but the photo was taken in the heat of the moment. I was scared. You can see fear and sadness on my face which is not something I like to show. I don't like to show my weaknesses. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'd love to hear every single video. Like this video if you liked this rambly kind of video. Comment down below if you've had bad experiences with piercing guns. And I hope you all have a fantabulous day.